Okay, good morning. This is Eric Windheim, building biologist and electromagnetic radiation specialist, and Stephanie Sage Kirst, building biologist and electromagnetic radiation specialist. We're assessing a, a real estate pre purchase house up in the foothills near Auburn, and the NFA meter is indicating 14.6 milligauss. And Stephanie, what is the reason? Why are we getting this? Uh, this uh, what, first of all, what's the risk assessment level on 14 milligauss? We are well into the extreme concern range based on a reading of 14 milligauss. As we walk throughout the home, we've found evidence of multiple wiring errors. As we, with all of the loads on, all of the lights on, as we move through the home, we have significant when you turn that AC light switch on, the magnetic field. field changed drastically, didn't it? It did, and we're finding that it fluctuates dramatically as we move throughout the home and manipulate the switches, turning the lights on and off. Okay, so it, we've seen a low of 8, which is above extreme concern, and as high as 14, which is almost three times extreme concern. Yes, yeah, so there we are, 15, 16, and we're at the regulation distance of one, 18 inches from the wall. So where else in the upper part of the house are we getting this kind of magnetic field? We can walk across the top floor of Let's the do home. It. Okay. So the magnetic field is lower here on the breezeway. And okay. as we get closer to the switches, particularly in this bedroom here. Okay, so hold on. Bring it back over here. So hold it right up about there. So in this case, when we turn the switch off, it goes up. So go over to that corner over there. Um, yeah. And hold it up a foot or two. We're at 5.36. Okay, hang on. I'm going to zoom in on that. So you're at 5.36 milligauss. Yep, 5.25 now. And okay, tilt the meter forward a little bit, top forward. Okay, that gets a better reflection. And what's the reading there? 4.72. Okay, I'm going to turn the light on, and now what do we have? We are at 3.66. Okay, so that's interesting. When we turn this light off, the reading goes up, and when we turn it on, the reading goes down. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anything else you want to point out here that we found out here in this upper floor? We've discovered that it can be the switches far across the upper level, mm -hmm. back far away where we were standing previously at the top of the stairs. Mm -hmm. As we manipulate those switches, we've seen a dramatic increase in fields in this room, and we're on the opposite end of the top floor in a 3,000 square foot home. Right, so how do homes get this way? I mean, don't electricians know what to do? What about building inspectors? Where were they? Why is this occurring? It's. It's a common error. It's a violation of the National Electric Code. It's a safety hazard and a code violation. However, as a result of sloppy work, there are common wiring errors that we find that we're able to detect with our gas meters. So in other words, you're a house doctor and you've got skills and talents that building inspectors and electricians don't have. Would that be fair and honest to say? I would agree with you. Okay. So what do we do? Tell these people to forget this house and look for one that's perfect? as clean as the wind-driven snow, or can this be fixed? This can be fixed, luckily for the new homeowners. And so it's gonna involve us today taking lots of AC magnetic field measurements with our three-axis gas meter and determining the areas in the home that have elevated fields, and then marking those switches that seem to be correlated with the high uh, AC, AC magnetic fields, and then coming back with an EMF trained electrician to resolve any neutral to neutral or neutral to so, ground. So does the electrician know how to do it? Can you just send any electrician out here? You cannot. You need a specifically trained EMF savvy electrician to understand. And then you would help him out. You'd be work together with the team as a team, right? Yeah, it's a collaboration between the building biologist and the EMF experienced electrician to solve these wiring. So errors. what do you say when the husband at this point or the homeowner or whoever that is said, oh my gosh, you're talking about thousands of dollars. I wish you'd never come to my house. How do you handle that kind of response? Well, in this case, we're lucky that the fields are coming from suspected wiring errors within the home and that is 
fixable versus if it was the same, you know, high fields coming off of exterior power lines, we've got a much bigger problem that's not necessarily fixable. Okay, so in other words, this is under the owner's control and it's not like a power line that's looming over the house. And we can see down there, this is a really lovely setting. It looks about as natural as you can get. There's turkeys and deer and everything else out there. But who knows, who thought it would be a EMF hazard spot? But at least it's fixable. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot cheaper than becoming ill and spending time in the hospital. So let's fix it. Hospital? This can send you to the hospital? If you look, there is a correlation between AC magnetic field exposure and leukemia, particularly childhood leukemia, oh, at oh. these levels. What about ADD, autism? Is that correlated also? There are correlations as well. And so it's, in the long run, it's much more cost effective and much less emotional to resolve these problems at the outset rather than dealing with potential adverse health effects years from now. <clears throat> now, I know that you've got a list of magnetic fields and illnesses correlated to uh, various levels of magnetic fields from, taken from studies in the Bioinitiative 2012. And somebody said, hey, those studies are 30 years old. So what do you tell someone who says all those studies are 30 years old? There's, there are no new studies because who is going to fund to replicate all of the hundreds of studies that we already have that show biological harm from ELF exposure? Okay. Why replicate them? Here's a hot potato. Why don't the electric utilities warn us about this? It's not in their best interest. I see. Okay, and why doesn't the county, the health department, and everybody else uh, tell us that we should be aware of this and check it out before we move into a house? It's an economic argument. If they had, if the utilities had to increase the setbacks for high voltage transmission lines and neighborhood distribution lines, it's just not economically feasible. I see. So what's the best thing to do if you're thinking about buying a house or you love this house, your wife loves the counter, the kids love the yard, <clears throat> what should be done before you become financially committed to a house? Have a certified building biologist, particularly an electromagnetic radiation specialist, come in and do a pre-purchase inspection and understand if there are any potential problems that need to be resolved before closing on the property. Right. Now, I recommend that my clients do that first because it's quite often the least expensive uh, inspection. It can be done the fastest and they can move on to the next house as soon as possible. Absolutely. Okay, now by the way, this is very severe. It's very widespread. How often? Is this like one out of every 10 houses? How often do you see this? I don't see this in every home. I would say it's, it's more commonly one out of every 10, one out of every, every 20. I see, okay. Now, I see it in about one out of four homes up here in this area. Okay. It's not the Bay Area, this is the foothills. Okay, any final comments here? I'm glad that we've been able to identify the problems and identify the solutions to resolve them. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you.